I'm Kath. Welcome to my channel Made by Cathcraft or welcome back if you're a regular viewer. Thank you very much for joining me today for another episode of my midweek sewing chat. So it's really nice to be back on for another chatty midweek video and in this video I've got a couple of sewing projects I wanted to share with you how I'm getting on with. I've also made some progress on my latest knitting project so I'll share um, how I'm getting on with that one too probably at the end of this video. But I thought as usual I'd start the video with what I'm wearing today. So today is Tuesday, I always try and film these videos on a Tuesday and then post them on YouTube on a Wednesday. And the weekend just gone has actually been a bank holiday weekend here in the UK, which is really nice. So that meant that yesterday, Monday, my husband was off work and my children were off school. So it's really nice to have a long weekend together and the weather wasn't too bad. But we were quite busy dashing about the place, we had a couple of parties, um, we were up in town yesterday for the Mayfair, there was quite a lot going on. So all weekend I've been dressing in jeans and sweatshirts, quite a practical outfit. So today I thought while the children are back at school, um, I don't need to be quite as practical. I've got on a more fitted sweatshirt and I've got on a handmade skirt. The sweatshirt is a really old one actually, it must be at least 15 years old, but it's one I've always kept because I really like it. I like the cable knit um, detail on it and um, yeah, I like the colour too. And it seems to have washed really well because I've worn it quite a lot over the years. And I've got it on with a handmade skirt and I'll stand up just so you can see a little bit of what that looks like. This skirt um, I made using this pattern here, which is the Moss Skirt Pattern by Grainline Studio. And it's one of the older skirt patterns I have. This is one of the earlier skirts I made. It's a really nice, it's kind of like a classic denim skirt look, I think, although I've made mine in a corduroy fabric. It's got a sort of fly front and these sort of slash pockets here and it's got a yoke on the back a bit like a pair of jeans would and you can either make it as kind of quite a mini skirt or you can add this little panel on the bottom to turn it into a skirt that falls I think just above your knee and the waist is designed to sit just below your natural waist. So it's quite a nice simple skirt and I find Grainline um, studio instructions they're quite concise and easy to follow. So when I uh, made this skirt, it says it's an intermediate pattern, but I think I was really a beginner at that point. Um, so I kind of stumbled through it a little bit, but the instructions did make it easier than it could have been otherwise. The only downside of this pattern is it hasn't got the biggest size range ever. You can see it goes from sizes um, 0 to 18, and the largest size is for a waist of 37 inches and a hips of 47 inches. And I made my version here. It's kind of like an in-between these two versions here. I didn't want to make a really short mini, and I kind of like this bottom panel um, idea. So what I did was I shortened um, this, the top part of the skirt and added the bottom panel on. So my skirt's not quite a mini skirt, but it's not quite an above the knee length skirt. It's, it's somewhere in between. Um, and in terms of sizing, I made the size um, zero at the waist and then the size two at the hips. So the size two should fit my measurements, which is for waist 26 and hips 36. But I actually sized down at the waist because this is actually my second version I made of this skirt because I made one exactly identical to this and then it wore out. And I always found the waist was a little bit um, too big and maybe just, I think I prefer it sitting on my waist and slightly below. So when I remade it um, in the same fabric, pretty much, um, just without any holes in like the first version I had, I took it in slightly at the waist just so it hugs around my waist a little bit. So I'll stand up so you can see where it sits now. So it's, it pretty much pulls in around my waist now and I think I prefer that fit on me. And the fabric I use to make my version, I think the pattern says you can use any medium to heavyweight fabrics including denim, twill, corduroy or wool, anything described as bottom weight. And I've used a um, fairly chunky corduroy, I think it's an eight whale corduroy fabric that I got from Minerva in this pretty royal blue colour. So you can see it there. Um, I think they still do have it in stock as part of, I think it's one of their core corduroy ranges. I'll link it down below. They have a few different colours available. I've also made a skirt in the black um, colourway of this fabric. I made the Nina Lee Camden skirt and I like that one too. It's quite a nice chunky corduroy so it works really well for a skirt and it's nice and cosy and the weather's still on the chilly side here so I'm not quite ready for sort of summery dresses quite yet. But yeah, it's a nice one. I've got a little button on the front. Um, Although I have made one other version, I used a sort of jeans button and like a kind of jeans snap type button and that worked really well too. So yeah, it's a nice one. I'll put a picture up so you can see how it looks on, so you can see the length of it with the little bottom panel I've added. It came together nicely. I think it's quite a nice just simple shape for a skirt and um, I like the idea of making a denim one at some point too, but I haven't got round to that yet. So that's what I'm wearing today. So in terms of what I've been up to this week on the sewing front, the main thing I've been working on is a pattern from this magazine here 
which is the Five Mood magazine issue number 16. And it's my first time buying a Five Mood magazine actually, so I've really enjoyed exploring the magazine. And the pattern I'm working on at the moment is the second project I've made in this magazine. And it is the Ermine blouse, and I'll pull up that page with a line drawing on so you can see what it looks like. And this is actually the pattern that really grabbed my eye when this Five Mood magazine came out last year. I really love the look of this blouse, it's nice to be actually getting around to actually making it. So here is the Ermine blouse. It's a really pretty, quite loose fit blouse with a button down front. And the feature I really like is this sort of deep V here with gathering to each side of the button placket. It's also got a yoke on the back with more gathering at the back. And then the, the sort of the neckline is finished with bias binding and that's a finish I really like. And I thought it's quite a nice way of finishing a blouse actually rather than a collar. I think it'll be really comfy to wear that and there won't be too much fabric around the neck. So yeah, that's quite a nice finish, I think. So yeah, this is the Ermine blouse. I've made good progress this week actually. The first thing I had to do was trace out all the pieces and that's quite a lengthy process I find if you've got the Fibre Mood magazine because when you get the magazine first of all all the pattern pieces are kind of overlaid over each other so you have to make sure you're kind of picking the right line draw like lines for your particular piece and size you want to trace and then you have to add in seam allowances because seam allowances aren't included on these pattern pieces when you get the physical hard copy of the magazine. I think if you get the PDF versions, seam allowances might be included, but I haven't actually bought any PDFs, so I'm not sure on that. So it's a bit of a lengthy process, but I got them all traced out, all the seam allowances added, I got the pattern pieces cut out, and then I was really enjoying getting stuck into this one. So I've actually made some good progress on the blouse. So I've got it here to show you where I am. So here it is, I put it on a hanger so you can see. So you can see I've made some really good progress, and the fabric I'm using for this blouse, it's a really pretty viscose um, fabric from Minerva, and I was gifted this fabric in exchange for a um, blog post which I'll be writing for them once I've finished this garment. It's really lovely and lightweight and drapey so I think perfect for a blouse and particularly a sort of romantic style blouse that has gathering and things. The print is quite busy so you can't see the details too much um, but the V is here and I think you'll be able to see it better once I'm wearing it. You can see a little bit of gathering there. You can see the bias binding around the neckline. Um, I really like how that went in so that's nice. Um, so as you can see, I've got a clip holding it together at the front because although I've got quite far with it, I haven't got the buttons added on yet. I also haven't um, finished the sleeves either. I want to kind of try it on when the buttons are all on and figure out what length I want to make the sleeves, whether I want to make them sort of full length or maybe a bit shorter. Um, but I have hemmed it because it's kind of, the bottom's done an interesting way where you sort of hem, hem it and then you add on the button placket afterwards. So yeah, it's a bit of an unusual way. I haven't done that way before. Usually I've added on the placket and then hemmed the whole thing, including the placket at the same time. So yeah, a bit of a different uh, method for this one. But I'm kind of on hold on this one now because I'm waiting for some buttons to arrive. I had some buttons in my stash that I thought might work with this fabric, which are these buttons here. They're the right size. I think you need an 11 millimetre button or thereabouts. And they're navy. But when I sort of held them up on the fabric, I wasn't quite sure they were quite right. So I've ordered some buttons that I think are a slightly lighter blue fabric and might pick out the blue in the little flowers. But I'm waiting for those to arrive at the moment. So this project is on hold. I'm really pleased how it's coming along. It's quite pretty. It's got a little bit of, um, as you can see, it's got a little bit of gathering on the sleeves. There's a little bit of a sort of slight puff sleeve, very, very subtle. It's got the gathering on the back too. And I think it works really well in this viscose fabric. I think it's going to be hopefully a lovely drapey, comfy to wear blouse that'll work quite well for sort of spring weather. So yeah, that's how I'm getting on with that one. So hopefully by next week, I'll have the buttons and I'll either be able to show you the buttons and then get on with sewing the buttonholes, or I'll be able to show you the finished blouse with buttons added on. It just depends on when those buttons arrive. So I'm really enjoying sewing this blouse and I'm really hoping those buttons will come soon so I can finish it off and start enjoying wearing it. And one thing I wanted to mention was um, in the magazine, the magazine includes instructions for how to sew the garments, but they are quite limited and they're mainly picture based without a lot of text. But if you go on the Fibre Mood website and create an account, which is quite easy to do, you can then access their full detailed instructions, which have um, all the kind of text to go with the pictures too. And I found that really useful for the Ermine blouse because I was looking at the pictures in the magazine and I wasn't quite clear on a couple of steps. But when I got the full instructions on the website, it all became very clear. So I use those instructions to sew this blouse. So I definitely recommend doing that if you're planning on tackling a fibre mood pattern. But yeah, I'm really enjoying how this blouse is coming together. And hopefully I'll have some more progress to share on it with you next week. So hopefully the buttons will arrive soon for my fibre mood Ermine blouse. And I'm also hoping that the buttons, when they come, are the right shade of blue. Um, that match nicely with the colours in the blouse because I find it's quite hard when you're buying online to know exactly what shade of colour you're going to get so I'm keeping my fingers crossed there'll be a nice shade of blue and I'll tone in well with the blouse but yeah hopefully they'll arrive soon but in the meantime I've got to start on another project that I thought I'd um, sort of get going on while I'm waiting for those buttons and this is one I've been looking forward to giving a go 
And this is a bag pattern. It's this bag pattern here. I showed you last week, I think this one. The Peppin Tote Bag by Noodlehead. It's a really nice um, tote bag pattern. I've thought been interested in the idea of making my own bags for a while. So I thought I'd just give it a go and dive in. And this pattern, I've heard good things about Noodlehead patterns. They, they're kind of all about making bag patterns. Um, and this one's described as a simple tote, perfect for beginners and experienced alike. So I thought it'd be a nice gentle instruction into the, yeah, the kind of process of making bags. So it's quite a basic tote bag. You can have this exterior pocket, there's an interior pocket too, and these straps. And I thought it'd be quite a practical one that I'd actually get a lot of use out of. So a good one to try. So I started on this last night. Um, my husband went out to the pub last night with a couple of his friends. And often when he goes out, take the opportunity to do some sewing. Just because I can really get in the sewing zone then. And I often put on a couple of sewing videos in the background or I watch a DVD. And just yeah, really get sort of stuck into sewing. So last night I didn't actually do any sewing. I was more kind of preparing the fabric ready to sew. So I decided to yeah, get started and I cut out all of my pieces of fabric. So they're now ready for me to start sewing. And it was a bit different actually. Um, using a bag pattern and a garment pattern. This pattern doesn't come with any pattern pieces. In the pattern, it just lists what sort of the dimensions you need to cut are for each pattern piece. And they're all in rectangles, so it is quite straightforward. Um, I decided to do it slightly differently to how the um, pattern suggests. The pattern suggests that you cut your pieces out using a gridded ruler and a rotary cutter and a cutting mat. So you kind of just mark the piece out on the fabric and cut straight into it. But I decided instead, because I'm not a big fan of um, the rotary cutter and I haven't got a gridded ruler, um, I decided instead to um, actually make my pattern pieces um, on tissue paper or kind of tracing paper. I'll show you one of them. So here is one of my pattern pieces here. So I made them all like this um, and then I just put them on the fabric and cut out around them, a bit like I would do with a sort of garment. Um, and I thought that might work quite well because if I wanted to make this bag again, then I have all these pattern pieces. So it'd be quite easy to remake. Because I know people say that once you start making bags, it's a great thing to make for presents and things as well. So I thought that'd be nice to have these pattern pieces in case I did want to yeah, give it a go again. So I got all the pattern pieces traced out and then cut out onto the fabric. And I'll show you um, yeah, one of my pieces of fabric here. Um, I showed this fabric last week, I think. This is the fabric I'm using for the outer um, piece of my bag. It is a Rifle Paper Co. Um, cotton linen blend canvas fabric. It's really pretty, I think it's got this navy background and I wear a lot of navy, so I thought that'd be a good base colour for the bag. It's got these really pretty flowers on some sort of peachy and light blue and sort of sage greeny colours in it. And um, yes, that's one of my main outer pieces. The only thing that I noticed, which I mentioned last week, is that once I bought this fabric, I noticed the pattern says you shouldn't buy a one-way directional print. And mine is, as you can see, a one-way directional print. Just because the way the bag's constructed, there's one piece of fabric that wraps around all the way around the bag, so it would end up with... Um, one side be the right way up and one side be the wrong way up. Um, so I decided to do instead when I was making my pattern pieces is, for the main pattern pieces designed to wrap round, I cut it in half and added a seam allowance so that I've got two pieces like this and I'll sew them together at the bottom with a seam allowance and then it's all end up being a seam underneath, which there wouldn't have been otherwise as per the pattern, but I'm hoping that'll be fine. So yeah, they're all cut out and I've also added on interfacing on the back um, as required by the pattern. And this interfacing actually is a different type of interfacing to what I've used before. It is called, let me have a look, um, Pelon SF101 interfacing. Um, and I managed to find it online. There are a few different um, websites I found that sold it. I can't remember which website I used in the end, but I'll link where I got it from down below. So yeah, it's quite easy to find and it's supposed to be really good for bag making because it's quite sturdy. And it's, it feels quite nice and soft and sort of cottony too. Anyway, it was quite um, yeah, easy to get hold of so that all these pieces that need to be interfaced are interfaced. And I've got my lining fabric too. I didn't have that last week, I don't think. And for my lining, I just went for a plain navy blue um, quilting weight cotton. And I got this from Minerva. I thought it would just go quite nicely with the um, sort of floral fabric and let the floral fabric kind of sort of speak for itself and be the star of the show um, rather than going for a sort of jazzy lining. So yeah, all those pattern pieces are now cut out and sitting down here. So the next step is to start sewing. I also got a few other sort of bag making bits and bobs here that I'm going to use as part of this bag making. I decided I'm going to do the version with the zip included. So I've got this nice um, chunky sort of metal zip I'm going to add on just because I thought I'd like to kind of up my skills and try and yeah, learn a few new skills when I'm doing this bag. So I thought I'd try all the techniques they suggest. So I might be kind of going for the kind of intermediate version rather than the beginner version once they had the zip and everything in. But I thought I'll give it a try and see how I got to get on. So there's my zip. I've also got some magnetic snaps. I think one of those is going to be added on the exterior pocket. So that'll be quite fun to have one of those added on. And I've got another one spare if I want to make another bag. 
I've got in here the canvas to make my canvas straps. Again, it's just a navy canvas. This all came from Minerva. I just got a little sort of um, haberdashery lot of stuff for the bag. Just a navy canvas strap. And I've also got these heavy duty snaps too. Um, I'm not exactly sure where I'm using these in this bag. I just pretty much got everything on the supplies list and I thought I'm going to try everything. So <laughs> that's my plan really. So I need to have a read through the instructions now and have a look at how it all comes together. Just so I have an idea of what's going on before I start because I do feel like yeah, bag making is totally new to me. But I'm really looking forward to giving it a go and I think that fabric's really pretty and I'll make a nice bag. So I'll update you more next week. Hopefully I'll make a bit of progress on this this week. Although um, I am supposed to be painting our utility room this week. Um, I think I mentioned a few weeks ago we had our kitchen and utility room cupboards, um, the doors changed and in our utility room we had a cupboard replaced that had kind of gone, the bottom had sort of kind of gone sort of, it was, yeah, gone all, what do you call it? It wasn't right anymore anyway. So we had a new cupboard put in that wasn't sort of all bowed at the bottom. And it was a slightly different shape we had put in. So we've got a bit in our utility room that needs painting. We thought we'd take the opportunity just to paint the whole room because it's in a kind of colour that doesn't match with our kitchen because our kitchen we painted more recently. Anyway, it's not very exciting, but it's just a job I need to do this week. So I have a little bit less sewing time possibly. But my husband has got month end tonight. He'll be working late tonight. So I might do a bit of sewing this evening and get started on this bag. So I'm really looking forward to giving bag making a go. So I'll link down below all the sort of fabric and haberdashery items and where I got them all from for this bag in case you're interested also in sewing a bag. I think it'll just be a lot of fun really. So yeah, that's my other project I'm working on at the moment. So those are the two sewing projects I'm working on at the moment. And then I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I'd also share with you how I'm getting on on my latest knitting project. And if you watched my last week's video, my last week's midweek chat, you'll know that I'm currently working on a knitted cardigan and I'm knitting it using the Merry Wool by Wool Knitters. And the Merry Wool's a really lovely wool. It's 100% um, merino. It's really soft and squishy. I think it's described as an Aran weight yarn, but it's quite a chunky Aran weight yarn. And the shade I'm using for my latest cardigan, I've knitted it with it a couple of times in plain shades, but this is a shade I've been eyeing up for a very long time. It's called their Sprinkle Fantasy colorway. So it's a really pretty colorway with this kind of off-white or sort of creamy base. And it's got lots of flecks of different colors in it. So it's lots of fun to knit because the flecks kind of gradually come out as, as you're knitting. You can see them popping out and it creates a really pretty effect on the final garment. So I'm really enjoying knitting with it. And I am making a cardigan that's loosely based on this pattern here, which is the Hackney Cardigan by We Are Knitters. And the Hackney Cardigan is quite a relaxed fit cardigan with dropped shoulders. Um, and it's designed to be knitted in moss stitch, but for this um, Sprinkle Fantasy Merry Wool, I decided to knit it just in a straight stocking stitch just to really showcase the wool and keep it simple. So I think last week I mentioned I was just onto the sleeves and I finished knitting up the sleeves. And then what I do usually once I've got all the knitted pieces out is I usually pin them together and try the, the garment on and then check if I need to make any adjustments before I start sewing it up. And I use these little... Um, uh, what are they called, stitch counters to pin the garment together rather than actual pins. I find they work really well on wool. I just got these from Amazon, this little container. They're quite handy. There aren't very many in here at the moment because I've got them all out being used on the cardigan or in a little pot somewhere. <laughs> but yeah, I find them really useful. So I pin it together just loosely using these and try it on. So I got to that stage and tried it on and I decided to make it a little bit longer um, just because when I tried it on, I wanted kind of quite an oversized chunky look cardigan. And it was kind of coming up nice and long on the arms, but not so much on the body. So I added on 10 lines to the front piece and the back piece. And I pinned it together again. And I really liked the shape then and the sort of length of it. So I'm now starting on sewing it together. So I made a little bit of progress. I've sewn together the arm, um, sorry, the shoulder seams. You can see here, there's one of my shoulder seams and the other one. And this one also I've got an arm attached here. So I need to attach the other arm and then sew up the side seams and then go on to actually finishing around the front and doing the kind of ribbing around the front. So I've still got a few bits to go on this one, but I'm really enjoying it. And actually, I used to hate the sewing up of knitted garments, but these days I quite enjoy it when it when it comes to something like sewing up a simple stitch like stocking stitch, because I find it quite methodical. And I've watched a few YouTube videos kind of showing how you kind of seam with knitting. So videos on, say, how you seam stocking stitch when it's going vertically and horizontally, how you put them together and how you seam sort of vertical um, stocking stitch. And I think I have a better idea of how to do it now. I think when I started knitting, particularly when I was knitting cardigans for my daughter, I just sort of sew it together without much thought. And I didn't it didn't end up looking beautiful, particularly on the inside. But now, um, yeah, I really quite enjoy sort of t taking my time over it and making sure it all comes together really neatly. So that is where I'm at on this one. Um, I've not decided on how much ribbing I want to add around the front. I changed the Hackney cardigan pattern, added a bit more ribbing 
on the bottom and the sleeves because I thought it would kind of suit the chunky style of the cardigan I'm going for. So I've got a couple more decisions to make, but yeah, this is what the wool's looking like. You can see it's really pretty with all these flecks in. So I'm just really enjoying taking my time on it. So I'm not sure if this one will be finished by next week. Um, we'll see how I go, but I'm just really enjoying the process of making it. So that's how I'm getting on with my latest knitting project. So those are my sewing and knitting projects I've got to share with you in this video. While I'm on, I thought I'd also mention that it's May now, as you'll know, and I am joining in with Me Made May over on Instagram. And you may well have heard of Me Made May before. It's a challenge that's run by Zoe, who is Sozo Blog, and I'll link her Instagram account down below in case you fancy checking it out and finding out more about Me Made May. But it's basically a personal challenge that anyone can join in with. There's no competitive element. It's just for yourself. And it basically involves sort of spending some time in May to take stock of your handmade wardrobe and figure out sort of how it's working for you and if it could be working better. And that can include things like figure out if any of your me made clothes need mending or repurposing or passing on um, and whether you can kind of maybe, you know, notice them, make sure you aren't wearing so much and why you aren't wearing them. And if you could kind of, you know, figure out how to style them to wear them more, all that sort of thing. But I'm joining in and I'm sort of pledging to wear an item of handmade clothing every day. And I'm also trying to mix it up by trying to wear a different pattern company each day of the week. Just to kind of encourage me to kind of make sure I reach for a diverse mix of my me made clothes. And I am trying to pull out some older makes too, hence going for my moss skirt today. So on Saturday, I'll be releasing a video showing what I've been wearing all of this week. So including my sweatshirt and jean combinations from the weekend. And I'm planning on getting out some dresses and different outfits later this week too. So I'd love it if you'd join me for that video on Saturday, sharing a week of my handmade wardrobe. It should be quite a relaxed, chatty video too. I'm going to be sharing a bit of what I'm up to over the week as well. So I'd love it if you'd join me for that one. And I'm hopefully going to carry on sharing what I've been wearing in May throughout May. So I'll be doing a few more videos sharing a week of my handmade wardrobe all being well. And I'm really looking forward actually to digging out some of my older outfits and maybe trying some different combinations. Yeah, I think it'll really get me thinking about my handmade wardrobe and maybe even also thinking about any items I'm really not reaching for and that I maybe need to pass on to someone else who get more wear out of them. So I'd love it if you'd join me on Saturday for the first of my handmade wardrobe week videos. That'd be amazing. So I'll probably end this video here, I think. So I hope you've enjoyed hearing a little bit about my current sewing project and my knitting project too. If you've enjoyed this video, I would love it if you give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, then thank you very much for watching. I would love it if you would consider subscribing and also pressing the bell icon, which means you'll be notified when my future videos come out. So thank you again for watching. Um, I hope you have a good week and maybe some crafting time too. And I'll hopefully see you again soon. Bye.